All right, everybody, Eel Wargamer here. Welcome to the channel and welcome back. This is a Victory at Sea campaign uh, battle report that we're going to be doing. Uh, this has been a while since I've got this done. Um, trust me, I have actually played this game a few times already, but purely because of the camera and not working properly, I managed to fail epically on doing everything that way. So we've gone back to our really basic stuff of filming. Um, not going to bore you too much with that because we're going to dive straight in in a minute to go and check out the forces and see who's going to be playing in this one. However, uh, if you haven't already, if you're new to the channel and you're new to this, then please do go ahead and check out the previous episodes which will get you up to date a little bit more better with what's going on. But for this one, for our or well, well, battle in, in the Pacific. Um, the US obviously taking on the Japanese and um, the first three episodes um, we looked at uh, the southern fleets uh, so I broke them down to north and northern southern well northern central and southern fleets so we looked at the southern fleet uh, where the Americans were absolutely whooping the Japanese and kicking them out of the south, um, the south Pacific area. Uh, the Yamato did get involved in the episode uh, 3 part 2 and um, yeah, it's uh, disappeared back off into the ocean again, uh, leaving the rest of the forces to carry on. So um, we're looking at the central fleets now, and with the central fleets, we're going to be taking a look at aircraft and aircraft carriers. So we're going to be uh, introducing them. Now, uh, there are a few rules to go with the aircraft carriers and everything like that, but we'll talk about that as we go along. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get this right. I should do because I've played this a couple of times, but I'm guaranteed to make mistakes, but there we go. Uh, let's go ahead, first of all, and take a look at the forces. We'll take a look at the Japanese first, and then we'll look at the Americans. Then we'll go into the deployment, and then we'll go ahead and look at the actual scenario that we're playing for this game, which is episode four. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Japanese forces first. Okay, so here are the Japanese. Uh, right dead in the center there, we have the Congo the battleship there. Uh, alongside it are two Mogabe heavy cruisers and just below them we have got four Fubuki class destroyers. There are no upgrades to this um, to this fleet at all. Uh, we will be adding upgrades as we go along but um, there is a little reason why I've not added the upgrades just yet because we are introducing the aircraft. As you can see the Japanese will be fielding here uh, some valves, so four flights of valves which are dive bombers and then we've got four flights of um, zeros so they're the fighters which will be accompanying these guys um, in this battle to come so that's it for the Japanese so nice and simple nice and sweet like I said no upgrades whatsoever um, and you'll notice there is no aircraft carrier going to be placed for the Japanese and we'll talk about that a little bit more in this scenario as we go along so let's go ahead and take a look at the US fleet that's going to be trying to tackle these guys as they come up towards them right then so for the Americans then right here dead in the center we have a New Mexico class battleship that's going to be taking point in this uh, battle then we have a Essex class aircraft carrier here um, next to it we have two Portland class cruisers which will be joining this fleet as they go about their business and then we have four Fletcher class destroyers so for the USS Essex or the Essex class carrier uh, we're not doing real much name wives of the ships for this but um, for the Essex class carrier we have got four flights of Hellcats and then we have two flights of Corsairs so um, we will be explaining why they're quite limited on it it all ties in with the scenario um, but we'll uh, explain again a bit like the Japanese with their fleets and what with, well, with their uh, aircraft carrier why it's not on the board we'll explain that as we go on the scenario but the Americans do have a bit more a little bit of an advantage here um, but um, it will all tie in as we go into the scenario which we're going to talk about and take a look at next but there we are there's two fleets ready prepared to tackle each other um, I don't know the points wise um, I don't really do points um, just purely like getting the uh, ships on the table doing more of a narrative sort of campaign style uh, gameplay yeah, but that's purely because I'm playing solo I think if I was playing uh, against someone else uh, yeah it'd be completely different go straight into the points wise but for this I'm playing solo to keep it more fun and interesting and to keep it up to date with the actual campaign itself these are the two fleets we're going for so let's go ahead get them deployed and then we'll talk about the scenario and go into the actual game itself so let's go on to deployment all right then we are deployed and down here in this corner here is the Japanese fleet 
and just over in the top right hand corner is the US fleet. So um, deployed for them, they got the uh, Portland class cruiser at the front. Um, then we've got the New Mexico class battleship just there. Behind that is the Essex and then we've got the other Portland class cruiser just down there. Flanking them on either side is the uh, Fletch class destroyers, two on either side. And down for the Japanese then, we have got the Fubuki class destroyers, uh, just along the back and on the flanks as such, or on either side. Um, then we have the Congo in the middle with the Mugabes on either side of that. And then we have our flights. Now these flights have been broken down where we have got the Zeros and a Val in each one. And what the uh, Zeros are doing, they are escorting these dive bombers. So for the scenario then itself, it goes like this. The Japanese High Command are very, very upset about the recent actions that have happened in the South. Um, forcing them out of the South Pacific, therefore they have unleashed the Congo, they've decided that's it. Central Fleet has decided to go bomb for that's it, get the guys in, get the uh, Congo battleship in, start doing some damage, um, and going out hunting and seeking wherever the US fleet is. And over here for the US, with the Essex class carrier, these guys are basically on a standard patrol, they're just uh, sailing through the waters and uh, basically on a little routine patrol as such uh, trying to establish contact with the enemy or dominate the ground. So when I play these games I usually try to keep the um, objectives in mind although the objectives do come down to a few certain rules with them uh, I do keep that in going but not quite so much in regards to the victory points wise I tend to go for see who's winning or see who's actually dominating the board um, in order to, to clarify a victory as such. Now, if again, if I was playing with someone, then we'd definitely do the actual victory points wise of it, but you'll notice with my other games, it's kind of just get the guy, get the, get, get the ships on the table, have a bit of fun, roll some dice, and do like a narrative campaign of it. So for the Americans, then they have just basically come on a normal escort and patrol. That's all they're doing is they're patrolling the waters, uh, just trying to find the enemy or locate them as best as they can. Whereas the Japanese, they are on, um, domination so these guys are trying to dominate the ocean as best as they can so yep they've unleashed the congo they're looking at trying to tackle the um aircraft carrier they've spotted it the japanese have an observer flight which has located the us the us have not spotted the japanese um normally they would do because you've got observer flights on the cards but i tend try what well, I try to tend not to use them too much. Um, it can get a bit complicated at times um, because observer flights can either do something for your initiative, um, gain your points for the initiative, or you can place it on certain ships, an observer flight on, on a ship, and it means that you can shoot over the horizon, which basically means you can shoot more than 30 inches. Because in the rules, you can't shoot at a ship that's over 30 inches unless it has got an observer flight on it. So for the Japanese, they do. They have an observer flight on the Essex, biggest ship in their fleet there. It's able to have been spotted, uh, so therefore the observation flight is able to direct fire in for them. For the Americans, they don't have it. And that will simulate the fact of when the Americans as well with their aircraft, um, why they've got so few, because they're just not ready. These guys have been unable to locate or spot the Japanese fleet down here, uh, but the Japanese with their observer flight has. The Japanese for this do have the initiative. Uh, so they will be uh, going first in the gunnery phase. The Americans will be forced to move first. On top of that, the aircraft carrier, to launch aircraft from the Essex, it needs uh, to be sailing into the wind. So the wind itself for this game is coming from this board edge up this way. So the Essex at the moment cannot launch any aircraft unless it's sailing into the wind, and it can't do any turning um, in order to do so. So it's got to do a bit of turning first of all before it can actually launch some aircraft, which puts them at a bit of a disadvantage. So um, that's the whole reason behind it. The Basically the Japanese have got the surprise, they sprung this trap, they've gotten to the Americans and they've put them at a disadvantage. So they don't have any aircraft carrier, the Japanese. Um, the Akagi is off the board. It's somewhere, you know, further south in the ocean, wherever it is, uh, but it's going to be launching aircraft. So while the 
Japanese flights, if they get destroyed, they will be returning following turn and they'll be coming on from this table edge here. That's just basically to simulate that the aircraft carrier, the Akagi, is around, but it's still pumping aircraft in because they've got the advantage in this um, and they want to be doing some damage. You know, like I said, the Japanese high command is very, very unhappy with what's happened previously. So the Americans then, they're basically going to try and save as many of their guys as they can or many ships as they can, do as much damage as possible on the Japanese, but without being inflicting damage on themselves. But that's going to inevitably happen. But for the Japanese, they're going to try and dominate this sort of um, this area of the table in this ocean. So could the Americans do it? They might be able to. Let's see how they get on. We're going to go into turn one. But for the Japanese, get to the Americans, do as much damage as possible. The Americans try and save themselves as best they can and they would be looking at trying to get away as such. So, let's go into turn one of this episode four in our campaign for the Battle of the Pacific. All right, that's turn one movement done. Uh, we're interrupting it a bit just to give you a little update on what's going on. If you're questioning why some things have happened over here, we will go into that now. So we had this destroyer down here. It's um, basically passed the order, or automatically passes the order to create smoke. Um, so the smoke screen has been put up, especially for the Essex class carrier, meaning it's going to be blocking line of sight from some of these ships here if they're wishing to fire upon it. Uh, the Essex class carrier there, it moved forward and it was able to. Um, it passed its orders of um, turning 90 degrees come about I believe it's called uh, along with the uh, Portland class cruiser behind it so the order was given to these two ships to come about whereas the remainder of the fleet sort of like cruised ahead a little bit further and they're going to be looking at doing the same possibly coming down here adding a bit of protection for this uh, aircraft carrier but the aircraft carrier now is into the wind and on the next turn it should hopefully be pumping out some aircraft uh, for the Japanese then they've just basically moved up um, fanned out a little bit but nothing too major but they're looking at going directly straight ahead to get as close as possible to start to unleash their guns now when it comes down to this now it comes down to you notice the uh, aircraft they've not moved yet because it would now be the uh, aircraft movement turn once all the ships have moved the aircraft then gets moved now because there's no american aircraft on the table it will be the japanese um, they'll move all their aircraft in one go if there was american aircraft on the table it will be a roll off um, or the player who has the initiative decides who gets to move first but we'll talk about that in the next turn when the Americans actually get some aircraft on the table. So let's carry on with the rest of the turn before we go into the gunnery phase of moving the Japanese aircraft. Okay then, so the aircraft are there moved up. Um, both, well all flights of the VALs escorted by those uh, Zeros and they've gone to the minimum range to keep in contact or base to base contact to enable them that they are actually uh, escorting the VALs because uh, normally the Zeros go 24 whereas the valves can only go 17 inches. So they've only gone 17 inches because they're escorting those aircraft. But we're going into the gunnery phase now. Because the Japanese have the initiative, they'll be firing first. And the Congo here is going to be firing with its two front turrets and it is targeting the uh, Portland class cruiser over here. So it's using its two front turrets, only two shots, two shots a piece, or two turrets, but four shots, should I say, not two shots, four shots each. Uh, they're needing sixes to hit because it is at long range and that is a minus two, no minus one that so it's only needing fives to hit so fives to hit uh, that's one hit and it does two damage so we get 2d6 uh, it does this much damage uh, needs a three plus but it's plunging fire so it's plus one so that is two points of damage inflicted on the Portland class cruiser there. Okay, for the Americans then, returning fire is gonna be uh, this uh, Portland class cruiser over here. Uh, it's gonna be firing with its two front turrets at the Congo. It's then gonna be firing with its rear turret at this Mugabe heavy cruiser over here. And then we're gonna be firing some light guns at this flight here. So before we do the flights, before we do the Mugabe, let's go for the shots 
coming from the two front turrets onto the Congo. So it is needing uh, fives to hit, it's got three shots on each turret, so six shots in total. It's needing fives to hit because it's only shooting at long range. And it gets one, and that does one damage. Ain't great, or one DD. So we get to roll this, and it is plunging fire because it is long range. And it needs a four plus to beat the armor of the Congo. But we get plus one to this, so that's five. That's one point of damage inflicted upon the Congo. And what we'll do now is we're going to do the rear turret on the Mugabe over there. So that's three shots. And again, that's at long range, so needing uh, fives to hit. Uh, that's a bit better. So they all hit. And then it's needing a three plus, but we've got plunging fire, so twos would do it. Uh, that's good enough, because there's two critical hits that we got there. That was six and a five. And we're going to go do the criticals now. On a four or more, it's critical. Uh, we got that one there, so we need to get the D10, which we don't have to hand, but when we get D10, we'll do the damage. Cool, there we go, D10, and we're going to roll the damage now for the critical. Uh, that is a 6, which is weapon system hit, so on the Mugabe down here, the weapon system has been hit. On top of the uh, damage it was dealt from those uh, main guns. Right, next up, we'll get the light guns ready where we'll be shooting at the aircraft and we'll talk you through how that goes about. Okay, so here, we're, here is where it gets a little bit complicated. So we've got light guns um, on the Portland class cruiser. They are dual purpose, meaning they can shoot at aircraft as well as shooting at other ships. But they are also restricted for a Portland class cruiser, meaning it can only fire up to half on its starboard or port side. Uh, so normally it would have six shots, but for firing an aircraft dual purpose, you have to round it down by half. Um, obviously, three on one side would be one and a half, but you have to round it up, if that makes sense, uh, by one, a minimum of one, but you have to round it up. So there will be two shots coming from the uh, Portland class cruiser on its uh, port side, shooting at this flight here, which would be the zeros. Now, to shoot down an aircraft, all you need is sixes. So, two dice, two shots from the light guns, and it will just need sixes. To note, those light guns cannot shoot anything else. So if it's shot at the aircraft, it cannot shoot anything else. Not that it is, because um, there's nothing else in range. But, so we need sixes to knock out that flight down there. These are zeros, because they're escorting, so nothing. So, they miss, anyway. But that is how, um, you shoot with the light guns using dual purpose because like I said they can shoot at other craft but they can also shoot up in the air providing they have dual purpose of course so that's it from the shooting for the Portland class cruiser down there we're going back over to the Japanese turn where they will be firing now uh, a question if you're asking why didn't the Congo shoot at the um, Essex over there when it can actually see I'm not going to go down too far well, I actually am, but um, it can actually see the back of the ship. However, when you're measuring in this game, it is always from the brig to the ship's brig. And unfortunately for the Congo, it couldn't see the Essex brig. So, uh, but the Mugabe can, depending if it's in range. There we go. Let's go into the Japanese turn and we'll carry on. And we're going to be electing one of these guys to fire back. So, not happy being attacked there by the Portland class cruiser. This Mugabe down here is going to be firing back at the same one that fired upon it. Um, it has got a weapon system here, however, it is not one of the main turrets because the only ones that will be firing will be its front three main turrets directly at the Portland class cruiser. It is in its starboard, uh, its port arc, uh, which means it gets a plus one to when it's shooting or to hit. So it would need fours, but it's shooting at long range, which would be fives. However, because it's in the port side, making the uh, Portland class cruise over here uh, a large silhouette, uh, it just needs fours. So we've got two shots in each of the three turrets. So fours to hit. That's uh, three hits. And again, it is plunging fire. So it gets that plus one. And it needs to beat three on its armor. So they're all hits. So that's it only does one damage on each of those, so that's three points of damage inflicted upon the Portland class cruiser there. 
Next up to fire then for the Americans is the New Mexico class battleship and it is going to be targeting the Congo over here. It is unleashing its firepower upon it. It's got, it can only fire its two front turrets. Uh, its rear turrets can't reach round. So it's firing extreme range, so it's minus two to this. So it normally you need fours, minus two sixes. So we need sixes to hit, but it's got three shots on each turret. We've got six shots and they all miss. So there we go, lucky for the Congo. Um, and the remainder of its other shooting from its light guns, etc., all the flights here are out of range. And it actually could shoot at this Mugabe down here, uh, which we will do actually with his rear turrets because that is in the uh, starboard side. And that is three shots on each of the two rear turrets. So again, we'll be needing sixes because it is extreme range. And there we go, there's one six, which does three DD. That gets plus one because it is plunging fire. It needs to beat a three. And that is, uh, yeah, so three points of damage inflicted on this Mugabe down here from the New Mexico class battleship. Nice shooting, that's good, that was better. Okay, so that Mugabe down here is responding to being shot at by the New Mexico class battleship over there. Previous turn for the New Mexico class battleship, I didn't actually do the um, port starboard arc um, modifiers to it, unfortunately, but I will do it for this one. Might be a bit biased, but there we go. Japanese have been getting whooped recently, so they need the actual extra help. Um, but um, there we go. The Mugabe will be firing with all its turrets because they are in range, uh, extreme range. And uh, they've got six, uh, two shots in each, so ten shots coming in. And they are needing six or fours to hit, but minus two because it's extreme range. However, because they're in the starboard arc of the New Mexico, therefore they get a plus one, so fives to hit. And let's get the ones that missed all out of the way, which is two of them. So we've got two that hit. Uh, does two damage from the Mugabe. And these are actually is it two. My mistake it is one. So they get one, one damage each uh, DD. So uh, the New Mexico has got six plus armor. Now this guys have got plunging fire because extreme range. However, hey, the New Mexico class battleship has armored deck, therefore it ignores the plus one. So we need sixes to actually do any damage. None whatsoever. Never mind. <laughs> but it was worth the try, worth the shot, and worth the go. Therefore. Your shots miss, mate. Okay, so that's the end of turn one. Uh, done, no more shooting. Everything, everything is out of range now. Uh, they can't get any shots off. Um, not bad shooting there for the Japanese. They've actually done quite a bit of damage on the Portland class cruiser down there. New Mexico obviously returned fire as well. Was able to put some damage on the Mugabe down there and the Mugabe here. Uh, but not too much, not too bad. Uh, we saw a bit of fire coming here into the flights, um, but the flights will get involved, I will assure you, in the next couple of turns. We will start to get interesting, there will be more bits and bobs going on. However, at the end of the turn we have to do uh, damage control on the Mugabe down there, and we need a four or more to remove that, and we do. So that weapons uh, effect or weapons critical hit is gone, it's back up and running again, all its weapon systems are ready to rock and roll for turn two. So. Let's go into the initiative roll actually. So we do need the uh, D10s. Where's the American D10? Can't find it. Um, we'll do that, we'll get the dice ready and then we'll go into the initiative turn. All right then, initiative roll. American's blue, Japanese red. And we have got a nine and an eight. So Japanese win the initiative again. And so that means the Americans will be forced to move first. However, the Japanese get to fire first in the gunnery phase. Turn two, coming up. All right, that's the movement of the ships done. We are now going to be going into the aircraft phase where we're going to be moving the aircraft. The USS Essex aircraft carrier over here has scrambled two flights of Hellcats, obviously getting them up in the air to come and intercept the uh, flights of Vals and Zeros coming in, looking at targeting the uh, aircraft carrier. But we're going to go into the movement. Now, because they've been scrambled, and they cannot actually uh, move until the next turn. So that's their basically their placement done for turn two. It'll be the next turn when they move, but we are going to be going into 
the aircraft phase for the Japanese so they get to move and uh, use their aircraft now so let's go into the aircraft movement for the Japanese okay there we have it so what happened down here we've got the valves here they can only go 17 inches so the um, zeros have stopped escorting them and gone to target the two Hellcats that have just been uh, scrambled off the aircraft carrier so we're going to see a bit of a dogfight go on there the valves are not in range they have to be in base contact to do any form of attack themselves so possibly next turn well it would be next turn and then obviously we've got down here the valves have one of the valves units has gone in down here and attacked the um, cruiser and then we've got one of the valves is doing a dive bombing onto the uh, new mexico class battleship so um before anything happens so we're going into the gunnery phase now because that's the movement when we go into the gunnery phase aa batteries fire first before anything else happens so we will be seeing some aa batteries being fired from the uh, portland class cruiser from the New Mexico as, uh, as well. Uh, obviously not down here, not in base contact, uh, but uh, we will be seeing some uh, some AA batteries going off, some light guns, because they've got dual purpose, so they can fire up to uh, aircraft as well. However, if they fire the dual purpose um, light guns, they cannot use their light guns in the following shooting or gunnery phase on their turn. So. We will be doing that. Let's go into the uh, Portland class cruiser here who will be firing its AA battery at the valves that are coming in to do some damage. Okay, so the Portland class cruiser then, it has its AA battery as a local one, meaning it gets one dice to fire upon the valves there. But it has got its light guns, which are dual purpose, meaning it can fire that at the uh, valves as well, which it will do. Um, they are restricted as well, don't forget, and from what I've been reading in the rules on either side, the port side or starboard side, you have to half what it is already. So normally they've got six um, light guns to do uh, dual purpose. You half that, which would mean there'd be three. But because it's on the port side um, and they're using it as dual purpose, they have to half that again, but round it out by one. So it would be two shots coming from the light guns on the uh, starboard side, I believe. Um, yeah, and then it's going to a port side, I think. Uh, forgive me when I get those wrong. Um, so we've got three shots then coming in. Now for them to actually hit or do any damage, all they need is a six to remove the flight. So these three shots are going in on the valves and just needing sixes. Doesn't get any, so all those shots miss basically and the valves are gonna be able to get through. So we'll be doing the same with the New Mexico class battleship. Um, it's pretty much exactly the same. And uh, one thing I didn't forgot to mention about the aircraft carrier, it does have AA guns with a range, meaning five inches. They can actually shoot the valves at this point of time, which we'll be doing next. But um, we're going to go for the New Mexico class battleship, which will be pretty much similar. Yeah, practically identical. However, they do have an additional extra two shots because they have two sets of um, light gun batteries on their on their craft. So um, they've got five stars this time. And again, they're shooting at the valves. So because the zeros can't actually damage them from what I've been reading, I'm pretty sure I can't. So we've got five shots needing sixes. And we get one six. So that means that that valve there has been destroyed. So that flight has gone. And that is how the AA work in regards to this game. Uh, let's go on to down here where the Essex class carrier is going to be firing its AA guns at the valves coming in over here. Okay then, so for the Essex then shooting, it is much more well protected with AA guns and light guns. So it has got uh, six normal AA light guns, shots that is, and then it's got three local three, which means it gets nine shots in total from that. And then it does have its uh, light guns, it's got two sets of light guns um, in its arsenal, and that's going to be an extra three shots on top of that. So we'll do the AA battery first, and again, because these have actually got a range, they can actually target the um, the, ze the um, valves coming in over here. So they're not targeting the zeros in the dogfight, they can't do that, but they're targeting the valves. So all these shots are going to be on the valves. Again, just needing sixes. Uh, they miss it, <coughs> miss all of them. Never mind, that's not good, all those shots. And then they had the light guns, so we need three shots on those. Need six 
no, not at all. Uh, so they don't go through. Right, uh, dogfight happens at the end of the gunnery phase and we'll go into that in a bit, but that is the AA batteries firing from all of the craft that are in base contact or with a flight in right on top of them. But the uh, New Mexico there did a good job of taking out those valves that were targeting, targeting it then. So let's go into the gunnery phase where the Japanese will be firing first. Okay, so the destroyer from the Japanese down here has elected to go first in the gunnery phase. It is miles away from shooting, but it's elected to go first because it's going to be making the, or well, foregoing its shooting to allow all the aircraft that are in base contact that can do damage to do it. Obviously apart from the dogfighting, but the only one in at the moment is the Vals here, and it's going to be making their attack on the um, Portland class cruiser there. Basically means that you have to elect a ship to forego any of its shooting in order for the aircraft to make their attack. Now, if there was other aircraft in contact with other um, ships on the board, then they would do their attack as well. The Zeros here, they literally pretty much can't do any damage against um, the ships, but they're very good for dogfighting. But uh, here we go then, we're going to do the Vows. Now, all it is a simple case, we just need one dice. Uh, so they're making their attack on the Portland class cruiser down here. They need one dice, needing a three or more, because they're a dive bomber. So three or more, and they've successfully hit. And they have done, they've hit. Now they have got uh, one dice for the damage. They're a devastating weapon, which means whatever number is rolled on this dice is how much damage is inflicted on the Portland class cruiser. On top of it, fives or sixes are criticals, as such is for devastating weapons. So we got a five, so we've done a devastating, devastating div, or a critical hit, should I say, but um, five points of damage already. And then we need to roll another d6 on a four more it does critical damage it does and then we roll on the chart which is oh that's a 10 so that's vital systems here i'm going to get my book to see what we do with this i'm pretty sure it's a d6 but we'll check it anyway so it is a d6 roll that is a vital systems d6 roll and a, oh my g wow that's a Catastrophic explosion, the ship's hull is immediately reduced to zero and the ship has been lost with all hands. So <laughs> that was impressive, um, very impressive from the, the valves there. They've just literally dropped the bomb straight on top of the target, probably hit the ammunition storage or the magazine on the craft and it's gone bang. So uh, that was very good and that was really good show of what the aircraft can do. But um, yeah, that was impressive. So that was really, really good. Let's uh, carry on with the rest of the turn. Uh, we'll remove the uh, ship now, but we'll go on to the rest of the turn um, with the gunnery phase, which will be going back to the Americans. Okie dokie. The New Mexico class battleship has decided to open up all its turrets, all its guns, onto the Congo just down here. Um, it would need four to hit, but minus five, uh, minus one because it's a uh, long range. However, it is in the target's uh, uh, starboard arc. So um, that means it is uh, silhouetted. So gets that plus one back onto it. So needing fours to hit, uh, it's firing all its guns. There's three shots on each turret, four turrets. So needing fours to hit. And once we sort all this lot out, it ain't too bad actually, but we'll get the dice prepared for that. So that's uh, five, six shots successfully hit, and these are three damage on each of these shots. Do we need more dice? Right, okay, so we've got a lot of damage dice coming in. Um, four plus armor on the Congo, it's not very big, but uh, we just need um, two plus basically because it's got a two plus AP. So two or more will do damage and there's lots coming and let's get that totaled up so we've got 17 points of damage in total and then we've got a uh, potential critical so we need to roll a d6 of this on a four or more it is critical uh, it isn't so 17 points of damage have been inflicted on the congo from that monumental amount of firepower so that was quite good so let's go on to the japanese turn for gunnery phase not one to just sit back and idly take some shots like that. The Congo is going to be responding to that firepower and returning with its own on the new Mexico class battleship. So it has got all its turrets in range. Uh, it's in long range. So again, that would be fours or fives, but because um, silhouetted, uh, we're going to be doing it on fours. So two shots on each turret on four of them. 
so it even falls. That's a lot better, and each of these do free damage as well, so we'll get them ready for you. Okay, so the new Mexico class battleship has a 6 plus armour. The Congo here has only got plus one penetration to this, um, so we need in fives or sixes. The sixes are criticals. The, wow, that's a lot of six. Oh my god. Okay, we're going to get this <laughs> totaled up for you because that is a lot of sixes. Right, so it's done 11 points of damage in total, and then we've got all these sixes we need to roll for. On a four or more, it will be criticals. So there is a lot there, so we roll them. Should we do them all at the same time? Let's do them all at the same time. So four or more criticals. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six potential critical damage, or six critical damage that's going in. So we're gonna roll the D10 now and uh, see what we get. I'm gonna get a pen and paper to write this all down. Okay, here comes the first of six. That's a six. Five, ten, that's a vital system hit there. That's another six. Two more to go. That's a three. And a four. So we have got two hits on the engine. We have got three hits on the weapon system and then we've got a potential vital, well, we've got vital system here which we'll roll for now so we need d6 and we'll see what happens that's a four uh, magazine of blades takes 2d6 additional damage so takes six points of damage on top and we'll have to calculate the rest up because the other areas do accumulate some damage Okay then, so the New Mexico class battleship took a pound in there. We have got its rudder has been damaged. One of its turrets and some weapon systems have been reduced, but one of its turrets is randomly damaged, um, which means when it's firing next turn, um, we have to see whether it actually successfully gets to fire. Uh, its crew area has been hit as well, due to the um, weapons area being hit, it added onto the crew, getting some shrapnel. And obviously its magazine is ablaze on the vital system, which remains in play all the time with that magazine and what that does basically means that uh, you have to roll a d6 to see whether it can fire or if not on a four five or six it gets to on a one two or three it doesn't so it's not looking good for the guys in the new mexico they took 24 hole points as well so I think they're down to about 58 hold points, but still the Congo down here is lower. I think it's on 55, but not far off. But that wasn't too bad. Bit of good shooting there from the uh, Congo. So we're going into the American turns to return fire or do some shooting back if they can. So American turn, gunnery phase. Well then, so it's not looking great for the Americans on this, unfortunately. Uh, their destroyers over here, they're simply just a bit too far away to actually really inflict any damage on the um, cruisers and the Congo over here. Um, just not close enough, they need to get in. Just being at that extreme range with their light guns. Uh, the only one who is able to do some shooting to do some possible damage is the Portland class cruiser over here and it will be targeting the Mugabe over here. Uh, it's the closest one to it as such um, and uh, it's probably the better one that it can actually do some damage on uh, because it is firing at extreme range. But it's able to get shots off so it's needing sixes to hit. Uh, three shots on each cannon, or two shots, no, three shots on each cannon, so six is to hit. Uh, we get one, and it does one DD for that damage. And then we need a three or more, there's no AP on this. Uh, but it is plunging fire, sorry, so there is a plus one to that. Uh, but that's enough, so it does one point of damage on the Mugabe down here. So not too bad. Um, I think a few times I did forget the plunging fire on some of these things, but um, trying to keep it simple, trying to keep it sweet, sweet and yes, I am forgetting a few bits and bobs. But uh, there we go, one point of damage done to the Mugabe. The Mugabe's going to be firing back, both of them are, and obviously these destroyers are not in range neither. After which we'll be going on to the dogfight, but two Mugabe's then, we'll be doing the firing process next. Yep, so this Mugabe then, down at the bottom, the, down the bottom table edge here, is firing upon the New Mexico. That's the biggest threat, that's what I need to get rid of. Um, and it's firing with all its turrets. It's firing at long range, so that's minus one, so I need fives to hit. 
and uh, that's it so fives to hit and not too bad there that's three in total and these do three damage dice each there uh, so it gets plus one because it's plunging fire but it's needing sixes at least or fives to do any damage uh, cool so we've got two two damage there and a potential critical Yep, we get a critical. Crikey, there's another critical on this uh, poor New Mexico class battleship. Um, let's see what we get. Uh, a one, and I think that's uh, that's engine hit. So we've got another engine hit marker to go on the uh, New Mexico over there. So not bad fire in there. Again, so that's three, two, two points of damage plus the damage on the rudder there. So it was an additional point of damage. Um, the rudder, well we hit the turbine this time, which caused two points of damage. So we got four in total, and then we got another crew area hit there, uh, which has caused uh, a fire, and that's caused another point of damage. And we go on, when we go on to the escalation, we'll see what happens with that fire, but I'll put a marker on the ship just to note that it is on fire a bit. Um, but wow, not looking good for the New Mexico. It's taken an absolute pounding here. Um, but there we go. So. That was shooting from that Mugabe. Now we're going to go onto this one because the Americans just have nothing else to shoot back with. Yep, here we go, Mugabe again on the New Mexico bar battleship because biggest target, got to get it out. Um, this time it's only can fire with its three front turrets, so it's only got six shots and uh, it's needing fours to hit minus one because it's long range. However, um, it is silhouetted, so uh, brings it back up to four to fours to hit. There we get three hits, not too bad. Plunging fire on this again, so we need fives or sixes to do damage. Uh, we get a six and a five, that's the same as last time. And that's a critical hit, so we roll the dice for that, four or more. Nope, but that's two points of damage then inflicted on the New Mexico class battleship. Okay, end of the gunnery phase, then we go into the dogfighting phase, so we've got zero on the Hellcats there and another zeros on the Hellcats there. Uh, so we would do the top one first of all. Now how we do this is basically both teams roll off. We've got D6. Now the zeros have a plus two. However, the Hellcats have a plus three. So you need to beat each other's score basically. So we'll roll, uh, roll the Americans and roll the Japanese. So we've got three and a two, plus two that's four, plus three that's six, meaning that zero has been, that flight has been defeated. Uh, we'll do the other one, for the bottom one. This time we'll roll the Japanese first. And uh, same again, so four, five, six, six. This time it is a draw. So these two remain in a dogfight just as they come off the deck of the um, Essex class carrier there. But that's how dogfighting works in regards to the um, game. So let's do a overall recap of what's happening turn two. Right, so that's the end of the gunnery phase and the end of the um, aircraft shooting phase and dogfights. Uh, we'll be going into damage control and escalation. Uh, first of all, yeah, the Americans are taking a pounding here, um, but we've seen some um, aircraft used. These guys, the valves down here, they've obviously dropped their bomb and destroyed the uh, Portland class cruiser there. That went straight up. Uh, it was a good roller that was, but they've got a rearm, so they have to go off the board now, off their board edge, in order to. Um, get rearmed and come back in on the following turn, but they've got to get off first of all. Uh, but we do have to do the escalation now for the uh, New Mexico class battleship, or sorry, the damage control. So first of all, these guys uh, have given, given taking the order, um, all hands on deck, the captain's calling for it because they are really, really critical, which means when we do the damage control, we can roll on all of them rather than just one. Um, obviously the magazine ablaze that remains in play constantly. So we need to do a crew check first of all and pretty sure that's just 2d6 but i'll have to check that but we've got to do a crew check first of all to see whether they're able to um, get all hands on deck and do that perform that order so it's just a d4 and on a four or more they successfully get it all so they don't so that's that's not good news for these guys um so what that means is we've got three areas there. We've got the engine, weapon system, or the crews. Um, now the crews, they've got the escalation, so uh, which means that fire. We want to get that fire put out. If we reduce it, that escalation is not going to happen. So, well, it's quite tricky. Um, we could roll a D3 or whatever and see what happens. Um, 
I might just do that actually uh, to make it more random, um, make more uh, to be like to simulate the chaos that's going on the ship. Um, we're going to get a D3 and roll and see what's going to work. So we'll say one for the um, engine, two for the uh, uh, weapon system, and three for the crew area. So roll into D3 to see which area it's going to be. Uh, we do the damage control on. That would be. Three. So we are doing a damage control on the crew area. So we need to roll a d6, and we need a four to remove one, five to remove two, and if there was three on there, we could remove the third one if we got a six. Five. So we can remove two. Oh, that's a bonus. That's pretty good. So the two crew area hits will remove, be removed, which means that fire will be put out. If I can get it. So that is a bonus. Now we don't need to do the escalation for the um, battleship because they've, the crew's been able to uh, sort that problem out. So that's a bit of a bonus for them. Uh, I think they needed it. But uh, saying overall the battle is not going in their favour. Um, the Japanese down here are really definitely owning the actual... Uh, let's get this wide angle. Owning out the uh, ocean here. So, right, let's go into... Uh, roll for initiative. So, oh, so it's a six and eight. So again, the Japanese win that. So the Americans will be moving first, but the Japanese get to fire first in the gunnery phase. Okay, okay. Turn three movement done. Um, now I put dice down so you can see exactly who is where. <laughs> uh, obviously, all the Japanese down here with the white dice. Um, you can see how well they're actually keeping their um, sort of like fleet battle line, should I say. And then obviously the Americans got the green dice. Now normally I put the dice behind them when they've fired, but it's just to help you uh, keep up to date with where things are so you don't get lost too much because it can get a bit confusing when everything starts getting middled up and caught in the middle of things. Um, so try and make sense of what's going on down here. So we had two more Hellcats scrambled. Uh, the flights maybe able to get off one of the zeros was able to go and engage the other uh, one of them that's just taken off um, obviously that one's not in a dogfight because it's just taken off and not allowed to do anything and then over here the zero that was over here went around the back of the um, New Mexico uh, for reason being if it flew across the top of it the New Mexico could fire its anti-aircraft guns at it as it moves um, it's part of the rules but it's got engaged with the two Hellcats that uh, were down there so they're unable to move in to stop the two valves which have now got into base contact with the um, aircraft carrier and they're going to be looking dropping some bombs or doing some dive bombing on top of the uh, aircraft carrier there so it's not looking good down this end and the other flight as I said in the rules for this game that the Japanese will be pumping aircraft in from the aircraft carrier that is not on the board so, uh, so there's movement, it looks a bit chaotic. The New Mexico class battleship taking a pound in. Uh, it's only been able to move three inches. That's what it's allowed to because it's a uh, rudder and turbine are damaged. Again, one of its uh, weapon systems has been caught a fire. You know, the magazines are fire, so they're trying to tackle that. And that just basically means I have to roll to see whether they can shoot, but we'll go into that in a bit. So, Japanese won the initiative, so Japanese will be firing first. And, um, we got some targets to pick here, um, but we'll go ahead and do the Japanese turn or gunnery phase. Before that happens, actually, we need to do the anti-aircraft gun. So the uh, Essex carrier down here is going to be firing its anti-aircraft guns at the um, valves that are just coming. So let's do that first. Okay, so the AA guns then got six shots. Uh, it's got local three, so we get an extra two additional, sh uh, three additional shots on top, and it'll be targeting this valve here or flight of valves there. Uh, so we need the sixes. Uh, we don't get any. Oh dear. And then we've got the light guns. So we've got we have to reduce them. Normally it's got six, but reduced by three. But uh, we get that plus one. So we have to round it up. So we've got two on that one, and three on that one. So two on that one. So we've only got four shots from the light guns um, going into the other valve uh, flight, which is just above it. Uh, needing sixes. That's better. So one of the flights. That one there has been destroyed, so there we go. That's the A fire going in. Um, we can do the light guns here, dual purpose. They should be able to fire on that, but we'll get the uh, stuff ready 
make sure that we can. Yep, so the Fletch class destroyer here is going to use its um, light guns and a battery, which is a local one. So you've got two shots that you can shoot at this. So we have got to elect who we want to really take out in this one, to be perfectly honest. Um, but to me, keep it simple, keep it sweet. We'll keep a shot on one dice without hitting the damn things. One dice on the fighters, one dice on the dive bombers. So you need sixes. No, not at all. They're okay. So they've escaped, scraped through. Uh, no other aircraft... Uh, or light guns shooting at aircraft in this turn. So, let's go on to Japanese firing first. Okay, so to begin with then, for the gunnery phase, this uh, destroyer down here is gonna elect to not fire anything, uh, substitute its firing to allow the valves, uh, or the valve flight here on the Essex to do its uh, bombing run. So, uh, again, we're needing three plus. This dive bomber, and we get it. And then we need, uh, this is devastating, so five or sixes will be criticals, and uh, whatever is on this dice is how much damage is dealt. So three points of damage have been inflicted upon the Essex. So no criticals, which is very lucky for it, not like the last one on that poor Portland class cruiser. Uh, but there we go. So that valve there has done its bombing run. We'll put a rearm token next to it so we know we know next turn that it needs to get off the board to get rearmed again. So let's carry on with the gunnery phase, which will be the Americans retaliating. Get it? So the Americans then will be firing with the New Mexico class battleship. Now it has got a magazine of blaze, so we have to roll for each weapon system or each turret that's firing, which has got four of them. We need to roll a D6 on a one two or three it doesn't fire so um, for the first turret, the front one uh, that's allowed to fire the second one that can't fire its rear one that can that can't fire and its second rear one that can fire so he's only got two turrets so one at the front and one at the back can fire um, the one at the front can only shoot at uh, what's in front of its arc uh, it could possibly go for the Mugabe actually um, but the rear turret will only be able to hit the Mugabe and the two battles, uh, the two Fubuki class destroyers here. So um, we're going to go ahead and elect the front turret to shoot at the uh, Congo. We've got three shots. Uh, it is at short range, so there's no longer plunging fire, but it just needs fours to hit uh, in the arc of the Congo, so therefore it's silhouetted. So you need threes to hit. Uh, that's a bit better and then each of those two shots accumulate three shots so we've got six coming in uh, four plus but there's plus two to this because it's a plus two AP turret weapon system so just needing twos uh, six would be not there we go so all hit by one we've got a potential critical but that's five damage in total with a potential critical so four or more yes and then we need a d10 see what happens 10 would be great seven that is the weapon system hit again I believe but I will double check that it might be crew area but it could be weapon systems so it was a weapon system hit there on the um, Congo so firing its rear turret then which will be shooting at the Mugabe uh, same again uh, it is needing we've got three shots uh, needing fours to hit uh, they hit. Wow, that's really good. And then these are three shots on each one. So we've got nine shots coming in. Get the dice ready. There we go. Nine shots coming in, and it's a three plus. So um, ones will do it, really. And that's enough. So they all hit. And then we've got one critical, potential critical. Get that out of the way. Roll D6 on a four or more, it's critical. Uh, it's not so we've got six seven eight points of damage inflicted on the Mugabe over here right then for the Japanese then they are electing the Congo here it's going to be firing its main guns all at the New Mexico class battleship see if it can sink her and then it's got a choice here it's got some light guns that it can possibly use on the um, two destroyers coming in uh, they're too close to use the main guns on um, unfortunately, because uh, they're point blank range, or well, that one is, I think that one is. Um, I'll do a double check on that, but 
either or, the main guns will be firing all at the New Mexico anyway, but then we'll get some light guns off onto these two destroyers here because they're posing a bit of a threat now. Um, but then the Mugabe's on either side should be able to tackle them should anything go terribly wrong. But let's go ahead for the main guns then. Uh, so we're in short range, so I need fours to hit. Um, and technically, I was looking it up a little bit to see whether it's in arcs and starboard arcs and port arcs of each other etc it does look a bit weird from the camera angle or from where we're looking at it um, but technically when you measure it it is but it's, it's slightly off because not from the New Mexico's um, arc because you've got to measure everything from the brig to the brig now the New Mexico well the, the um, Congo is well New Mexico is in the uh, port side or starboard arc of the uh, Congo but there we go um, so technically it doesn't work for the Congo so it's they're needing fours to hit anyway it would have been threes if they were in the uh, silhouetted but uh, just needing fours to hit uh, wow that's better that's good all right okay crikey I'll get some dice ready for this because all those accumulate free damage dice my mistake on that one, they accumulate two damage dice. So the damage dice going on the New Mexico then. Uh, needs six plus armor. Uh, there's no plunging fire, but uh, we do get a plus one AP for the Congo's AP on the turrets. So we are needing fives at least to do any damage. Sixes are criticals. Okay, so we've got a couple in there. Uh, we'll get that prepared because we've got two uh, criticals as well. Six points of damage in total then uh, with two potential criticals. So we have to roll these four or more. Uh, we get one, and then we need the D10, wherever that's gone. There it is. Uh, we need to roll on this, see what we get. Uh, that's a nine. That is the crew area hit on the New Mexico. So <laughs> another crew area hit on them. We'll put the marker on that. Uh, but there we go. It has taken six points of damage, and I think they might get an additional point of damage due to that critical hit. Okay then, so it's light guns, got two of them, uh, which you can use, so it's going to be using uh, one on that lot, which will give it four shots on that destroyer, and then it's got three shots on light guns that we're using on that one. Um, so uh, we'll do that one up there, first of all. So it's a short range, needing uh, fours to hit, uh, but it is a destroyer, so that's fives, and it has moved fast, so that's sixes, so sixes to hit. Uh, well, we get all three hits there, but that's good. And then we need, uh, these just do damage, these are minus two, but a flex class destroyer, I believe, has got two plus save anyway, or three plus, I'll actually check that. One plus save, but so all we need, basically, is anything. But minus two, because it is a minus two AP, but uh, we get one hit, so one point of damage has been inflicted on that flex class destroyer. For the other one then, over here, I've got three shots this time. Uh, it'll be the same again, so it needs sixes to hit it moved fast. And it is a destroyer, so none of them hit. Uh, there we go. So, actually, I think light guns, if I remember or recall, I'm checking the rules, I'm pretty sure light guns have tracking, so they're much more quicker to maneuver, so they don't get that uh, minus one for the uh, destroyers moving quickly, but never mind, we'll get that right in the next turn. So, um, there we go, that's the turn. Let's go into the Americans to elect something to shoot, and we'll go into that. Yeah, so just on that rules query then, the um, light guns and AA guns have uh, tracking, so they ignore the target moving fast. Um, I do forget that, You've got, I've got to apologise for that, I do forget that on times, I do forget a few rules whilst playing, but there we go, that's part of it. But uh, I should remember that next time. Uh, I think someone brought it up in one of the games before about it, but just one of those rules I just keep forgetting. Uh, but there we go. So, uh, American turns to fire then, so it will be one of these destroyers down here. Uh, we're going to get them ready, get the dice ready, and elect a target for them to shoot. Right then, so the destroyer here, Fletch Class Destroyer, has decided to attack the Mugabe here. Uh, it's firing, obviously, in the front arc, so it only gets one dice for this, uh, which is a bit odd, but there we go. Um, and shooting at the Mugabe, it is needing fours to hit, but it is silhouetted, as in the Mugabe silhouetted, so therefore we get that plus one, so we need freeze to hit. So, freeze to hit with a light gun. Uh, that hits and then minus two to this but I need a three at least to do any damage minus two so it doesn't do any damage so unfortunately that shot has missed and done nothing to the Mugabe there so uh, we're going to be firing back so the Mugabe will be firing back uh, we'll get the dice ready and we'll elect a target as well 
So the Mugabe then shooting all of its heavy or main guns, can't shoot at that because it's too close, so he has to shoot it at the, um, we well, could shoot the one up over here, but he's not, he's shooting at the um, New Mexico class battleship over there. So we're needing short range, so get that plus one to it, but uh, we're needing a force to hit. And, okay, not too bad. Uh, so each of these shots accumulate just one shot. So we're needing sixes would be doing critical, uh, but we get no plus one to this because they're not a powerful weapon. Um, so we're needing sixes. Well, there we got one. One six, which is potential critical. Let's get it in the tray to be fair. So no, so we do one point of damage on the New Mexico class battleship. Um, because it's got six plus armor, that was just, it, there's no AP to the Mugabe, so you can see where the weakness is for these cruisers. Um, should really tackle the uh, craft here that's coming in close. But uh, there we go. Uh, so that's one point of damage on the New Mexico class battleship. Americans to return fire. So this destroyer here is getting a bit gutsy. It's going to attempt to be firing at um, the Congo. So it's needing force to hit, um, and that's about it. Forced to hit on one shot because it's shooting at the front and that misses. Terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, trying to get these guys up and close and get some torpedoes off because that's when it's going to be absolutely chaotic. But um, we know now because the Mugabe is going to be firing next and I'm pretty sure it's going to be targeting that destroyer there because uh, yeah, it's getting very, very close. So Japanese to return fire will be with the Mugabe here shooting at the destroyer. Okay, so all its shots coming in then, it's needing force to hit. Uh, however, it's shooting at the destroyer, so that's minus one. Uh, it is in the silhouetted, so that brings it back up to four. Uh, however, the destroyer did move more than six inches, so it is fast moving. Therefore, it is fives again. So, fives to hit. Not terribly great, but not too bad either. Um, so, four hits, and then we need uh, one plus to do any damage. And three, four points of damage inflicted on that Fletch class destroyer. So it is crippled, however we have got some light guns going in. Uh, so we've got three shots, uh, we're needing fours again to hit, it's a long range, so that brings up to five, destroyer, six, destroyer moved quick, so that would be seven, however light guns have that fast tracking, as we mentioned before, so it brings it down to six. I need sixes to hit. Uh, we get one, not too bad. And this is minus two AP, but we need a one. Uh, minus two brings it down to one. It's enough to do one more point of damage to that Flex Class Destroyer, and it is crippled, so it's got one whole point left. Okie dokie, so the Americans will be firing with this Portland Class Cruiser on the other side of the aircraft carrier. It's going to be firing into the uh, Mugabe down here, um, hoping to get some more, score some more hits on it. Uh, so it's firing at long range. So it needs fives to hit, um, and that's about it. But it's got plunging fire, but we need five to hit. And that ain't too bad. Uh, that's four hits, and then it's three up, but we've got no AP on this, but we get plus one because of plunging fire. So we need a freeze to do it. Yeah, okay, that's enough. So that's four points of damage inflicted on the Mugabe there. So not bad shooting. Uh, be the Japanese to return fire next with whatever they have left. Still have some more firing actually from this guy. He's got light guns, so we'll be firing at the flights here. Uh, it's obviously a valve being escorted by the um, zeros, so it needs uh, just sixes on two dice. Uh, nothing, it's worth the try, but there we go. So, Japanese to return fire. And there's not much in the way that can, but it will be this destroyer down here, looking to see if it could take out or finally destroy this Fletcher class destroyer over here because it's right on one whole point left. Yep, so he's in range, he is shooting and he needs, uh, he's only got one dice because he's shooting from the front arc, uh, but he needs force to hit, however it's a destroyer, so that's five. Destroyer did move quickly, so that's sixes, and it is, uh, yeah, was it long range, so that's seven, however the uh, the destroyers have light guns, which means they ignore that moving penalty of moving fast. So it's back down to six. I need sixes to hit. Oh, he gets it. That's nice. And then he does 
minus two to this but it needs a one at least to do damage but minus two well it does enough that's enough to sink it so that's a destroyer sunk um, at the hands of a Fabuki class destroyer here doing its job keeping these guys safe and with that sinking of the destroyer 113 souls perished in its sinking uh, the remainder were able to get off the ship and get um, onto whatever wreckage they could possibly find um, and hopefully get picked up by their remainder of the fleet if possible so let's go on to the remainder of the shooting which would be the americans again uh, trying to pick out a target which would probably be this destroyer over here looks like he's going to be tackling this one over here or possibly targeting the mugabe yeah, so he will be firing. He's firing with one of his light guns and he's targeting the uh, Fubuki here. Uh, he's needing sixes to hit because it's long range and moved quick, etc. Or, uh, yeah, it's moved fast, long range, etc. and all that lot. So it needs sixes <laughs> to hit. That's good stuff. And then a one plus to do any damage. It does damage, so one point of damage inflicted on this Fubuki down here. Okay, so this Fubuki down here is shooting at this uh, Fletchcast Destroyer here and it's needing fours to hit uh shooting at destroyers have fives and destroyer moved quick so therefore it's uh, sixes uh, however because using light guns it ignores that fast moving target so it's uh fives to hit one shot because it's shooting from the front uh doesn't do it so americans turn next which will be this destroyer down here okay so target in the flights that are coming in here uh, it's going to be using its AA guns first of all on the zeros, so needing the six fails, and then it will be doing the same again with its light guns, needing sixes. Oh, we get one, so the flight is gone. Yay, that's better. Um, so not bad shooting there. It's knocked out the flight. I mean, those, those valves are unescorted, and uh, that's about it. So we're going to go into. The, we've got one more shooting to do actually down here. We've got this uh, Fabuki class destroyer over here to do some shooting and we'll do that before we go into the dog fights that are going to go in and happening above the uh, air in on the Essex. So let's go over to this Fabuki. We'll be targeting probably that one down here actually. Yep, so shooting with that one onto this Fletch class destroyer here because um, it's using all its turrets now because they are within the arcs uh, so we've got three shots needing force to hit but uh, it is moved fast it is a destroyer and uh, it's in short range so um, yeah it's going to need fives to hit so fours and fives because uh, it's moving quick um, we get that turret um, is able to track it so we need fives to hit uh, that's one hit and it does one minus two to this AP but need one well that's not enough to do any damage so there we go Terrible shooting there, could have done a bit of damage there, would have been good. So, next up, dogfight. So, beginning with this flight down here, or this dogfight that's going on, we've got the zeros get plus two, and the Hellcats get plus three. So, for the zeros, uh, yep, the flight has been destroyed because the Hellcats beat them. Then, we're going for this flight in the middle there, same again. Uh, that's enough, definitely enough. That destroys them. And for the next one, the one above it, right at the top there, got same again. Uh, all this time, the uh, zeros have won that one. So, not a bad bit of a uh, fight in there in the skies. Two flights of zeros and a flight of Hellcat have been destroyed. Uh, leaves it a bit wide open there, but um, I'm pretty sure these Hellcats here are going to come down, wipe out this foul before it can get in and uh, obviously take out the remainder of the flights. So it's turning a little bit for the Americans in the air. They've got very, very good fighters, um, and that's their bonus to them. But they've also got some um, bombers on board, so they can release those bombers, get them up in the sky, and probably take the fight to the Japanese now. So even though it was looking bad for the Americans at the beginning, it still is, because <laughs> we've got to do the escalation over here, uh, it still is. Um, could still all go in their favor so let's go on to the damage control actually we've got to do that um, we'll do the crew check for these guys for the um, battle cruiser uh, battleship over here in New Mexico uh, so we need a crew check for more uh, we don't get it um, so we're gonna pick uh, weapon systems oh no cuz that yeah 
actually the rudders we're going to try and we need to get some maneuverability really to be perfectly honest so we're going to go for the rudders um with the engine room so on a four one gets moved nothing oh my god they stay so that stays exactly where it is um same with the japanese they've got a uh, damage control to do here so uh get the japanese one out uh four or more it gets removed nope so that weapons um critical hit stays um and that is about it for turn three um let's get the uh, dice where we can do the um initiative and then we'll go on to the movement and then we'll go on with the remainder of the game so uh one. So, oh, so the Americans win it this time, meaning the Japanese move first and then the Americans get to fire first in the gunnery phase. Should be interesting this time. So let's go into turn four and see how we get on. Okie dokie, turn four movement done. And again, keeping the dice in place, you can see exactly what's going on. Getting a bit chaotic over here. The Americans are getting bold. Uh, destroyers have got to get in close to this Mugabe. I'll hopefully try and get around the back into the uh, Congo if they possibly can, but they're a bit sandwiched here between two Fubuki class uh, destroyers as well, so it's going to be interesting in this little area. The uh, New Mexico class battleship, even though it's limping away, um, it's still in the game with some of its firepower. Um, hopefully we should be able to take out the Congo, who is now in a position where it can tackle both um, the aircraft carrier as well as the uh, New Mexico itself but uh, leaving itself quite vulnerable a bit and down here obviously they kept their um, their escorts going There's not much to change there because the Americans are short down by two uh, two um, two ships now and uh, the aircraft carrier is very very vulnerable but it's able to get its Corsairs out uh, they just deployed here so they scrambled that um, but the Val over here it came on from the new board edge as with the, as we're doing with this campaign rule uh, it's coming on so um, it wasn't escorted but it came with the flight of zeros here uh, the Hellcats came and intercepted the uh, fighters but the valves were able to get through to uh, get onto the uh, aircraft carrier um, that was purely random I had a choice of where, which one to go for um, but they went for the uh, ended up going for the zeros but the valves have made it through so we've got one valve who's going to be dropping some bombs if possible, if it doesn't get shot down, because <laughs> it might do, and up here, Hellcat was able to get in combat with the uh, fighters over here, so the Hellcats are not doing too bad, they're doing their job, um, the Zero's here, this is a bit of a dogfight there, dogfight over here, and a dogfight over here between fighters and fighters, now fighters are the only one who can initiate a dogfight, so the bombers can't, uh, but they've been scrambled, so next turn they'll be able to start flying around, so it's going to be a bit... Uh, bit touch and go for the um, Americans but even for the Japanese still uh, threats are out there and it could possibly go all a bit crazy I mean we've got destroyer here very close very in range um, possibly next turn unleashing torpedoes but let's go into the um, gunnery phase but the first gunnery phase will be the anti-aircraft guns kicking off which would be from the Essex class carrier down here onto the valves uh, which has got um, six shots but then it's also got its uh, local free, so it's got nine shots going in on those valves. So if it gets six, it'll be very, very handy. Could knock them out. Air does, yeah, it gets free. So that's uh, that's saved. The Essex saved itself. Their uh, crew been preparing and getting used to these aircraft coming in now. They've honed their skills and been able to take out that valve. So that saved them a bit there, um, but still all to play for, especially with the Congo bearing straight down the middle there. Right, let's go into turn four then, and it is the Americans with initiative, so they go first in the gunnery phase. First lot of firing then, coming from the New Mexico class battleship. It has got lots to fire at, however, it's going to be concentrating its guns primarily on the Congo, because that's the big threat at the moment, and He's hoping, or we're hoping, that the Americans are able to survive a round of firing in order on that destroyer in order for it to do some damage here, but we, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> we're going to see how we get along. So, New Mexico class battleship, it has got that um, magazine ablaze, so we do need to roll a D4 for each turret. So, the f uh, front turret on a four or more, or one, well, yeah, four or more, it's okay. So, no front turret, second front turret, that's okay. It's rear turret that's okay, and it's other rear turret, that's not. So again, we've only got two turrets. 
able to bear down um, some firepower on here. Now it is at short range, so there's no modifier, and it is in the arc of the Congo, so it is a um, silhouetted, and that means it's a three or more to do damage. So six shots, three or more to do damage. Oh, that's terrible. That is terrible. Poor, poor shooting there. And then we've got well, three shots and three, two shots went through, but three dice with each one of damage. So six damage dice coming upon the Congo. Congo's got four plus, but it's plus two to this. So two or more. Uh, we have a six. Those two miss. We have a six. We've got four damage already, and a potential to a critical. Let's roll that. Uh, it does do critical and I can't find my d10 dice. I have found my d10 dice. So <laughs> let's do the uh, potential critical. Oh, that, that's good, that's good. That, that, that could be good. So um, where's my book? Got to get my book. Rolling on the vital system then. Six would be a catastrophic explosion and a one would be something less, but uh, six would be great for the Americans now. And, oh yes. There we go, perfect. That's two in this game, two catastrophic explosions. Um, and that's on the Congo. That's, the Americans absolutely needed that. All hands are lost. The ship has gone up in a catastrophic explosion, kaboom. I tell you what, the Americans actually did need that. It might have just turned the, turned the tide for them in this battle, but freaking heck, that's two critical hits or vital systems hit to be done with that. Um, I'm quite impressed. Uh, we had one from, the Portland class cruiser beginning we got dive bombed and went up and then now the Congo has suffered um, a catastrophic explosion and has gone boom. Uh, love it when it happens, it's always good fun. Uh, but wow, so New Mexico class battle, even though it's limping, limping away, it's done, uh, dealt a massive blow to the Japanese in this. Um, we'll see how they get on now in the future but there we go uh, it will be um we'll carry them with the americans firing i think we've got some light guns that can do some damage here on the mugabe but uh let's carry on but wow good good um result there for the americans in turn four so yeah we've still got his light guns to fire new mexico class battleship shooting at this mugabe here just on the other side of the um now blown up congo uh shooting with three uh, light guns first of all for well, the first lot of three shots uh, needing fours to hit because it is short range uh, no it's long range actually no it was short range it was short range and um, needing threes to hit uh, fours to hit sorry uh, that's two hits and this is minus two AP so you can't do critical as well uh, but that's not enough to do and no, it is no it's not not enough to do anything. They don't go through. It's minus two. Brings it down to three. Actually, no, it does. Brings it down to three. Therefore, there's two damage done on that one. Then it's other set of light guns. Now these are at long range. Um, so needing fives to hit this time. Be helpful if I get it in the tray. No, not at all. So just two points of damage done on that Mugabe from the New Mexico there. Not bad shooting. It's done its job. Yep, so this Mugabe here is electing to fire. It's gonna be shooting with its front turrets. It's free at the front. They're gonna be aiming at the New Mexico class battleship there, which is just out of short range or point blank range, sorry. So it's in short range. So it's needing force to hit, but um, cause it's silhouetted, uh, therefore we get the plus one, making it freeze to hit. So freeze to hit with the six shots. Oh, that's good. And these do one damage each and it needs sixes to do any damage because the uh, New Mexico is a six plus, so sixes. Uh, we get one, which could be a potential critical. It still gets critical on these. Uh, it does. And then let's see, so it's one point of damage already and a critical hit. That's a six, which is weapon system hit again. So another weapon system hit on the New Mexico. Um, that will do an additional point of damage. Well, additional d6 damage actually and I think it destroys a turret so d6 damage so three so it's got four points four whole points taken off and it does do uh, random turret is destroyed so right random turret random turret so how are we gonna do this on a one it's the front two it's the B turret 
and then it will be three, four on the back ones, um, five or six for a re-roll. Okay, for a re-roll, and then we route four. So it's going to be the rear, very rear turret of the New Mexico has been completely destroyed in that uh, that attack there. Now the car, the Mugabe there has got some more shooting to do. It's got two rear turrets at the back. Uh, it will be firing. Actually, it can't fire them at them because it's a destroyer. Um, it's point blank range. It's not good enough for it. Um, but it could potentially shoot at that. I've got to check the ranges on this. But it will be firing its light guns though, and we'll be picking the targets for you. We'll get back to you. Okay, not forgetting that the Mugabe has torpedoes. And it's going to be firing torpedoes at the New Mexico. Because it can, it's in range, and it is at point blank range, which makes it even more better. So, normally out of four, minus what, what, plus one brings up to three, because silhouetted. Plus one because it's at point blank range. So, um, that brings us up to two. However, we get minus two, because we're using the torpedo system, which brings us back up to four. But we've got six. Six torpedoes going in and needing fours to hit. And we only get two. Now these are devastating. So whatever these roll, these damage, but there's three damage for each one. So there's another six. Let's get the dice ready. Another six, it's three on each one. Another six, so whatever number these guys, what well, these dice roll will be the damage dealt. On top of it, five and a six is criticals. So let's roll and we'll tally it up. Okay, so we've got two critical hits, but that is the amount of damage, and we'll get that totaled up for you now. Okay, before we move on, uh, fortunately, because we've been hit in the side arc, uh, it has torpedo belts, meaning we minus two from all those rolls. So it does save the Mexico from getting those two criticals because they would be free. Obviously that two would do nothing, um, so we'll get it all totaled up for you. Uh, but in reality, the torpedo belts have kind of saved critical hits on this ship. In total then, it took 11 hull points of damage. So light guns from the Mugabe targeting the Fletcher class to destroy behind it, needing freeze to hit, three shots. Uh, that's two hits, and it gets minus two to this, but needs ones. Uh, minus two, that does nothing, but the six does, but don't forget, uh, light guns can't do penetrating hits. So that's one whole point off that Fletch Cast Destroyer there. Okay, so I don't know what overkill is, but this could potentially be it. We've got ten torpedoes coming from this Fletcher Class Destroyer into the back of the Mugabe. It needs fours to hit originally, however it's point blank range, that's plus two. Uh, plus one, sorry. So that's threes to hit. However, it's torpedo system, so that's minus two, bringing it up to five. So we need fives to hit on ten torpedoes. Um, hopefully, get some good rolls. That's not too bad. Um, well, there we go. Now, each of these <laughs> will do three damage each. So I'll get the dice ready, and we'll do the damage. So it's 12 damage dice coming in. And uh, these do everything on the dice because it's devastating and fives and sixes are criticals. So it's going to be a bit of <laughs> calculating up here. Okay, let's get this sorted and get back to you. 54 whole points of damage. That is way over the whole points that the um, Mugabe has. So that is the Mugabe gone. Um, it's, you can see how actually good the torpedoes are with that devastating, I mean, all those there are criticals as well, potential where we could have gone bang, so up against bigger ships, um, a lot better, but that Mugabe has gone under the ocean, it's sunk, it's gone down, that's it, the torpedoes hit their target and done the job, so again, it's turning in the tide for the Americans here, it's starting to look like it, but um, that Fletch class destroyer has got no more torpedoes left, but wow, um, yeah, we're going to carry on with the rest of the uh, the rest of the turn, the rest of the shooting, which will be going back to the Japanese. Actually, now we've got some light guns to fire from this Fletcher class destroyer, which it can shoot at this destroyer here. So we'll do them next. Keeping in with the uh, campaign uh, way that we're going, we've calculated the uh, casualties involved. 825 casualties on board the Mugabe there from that torpedo run. So then, light guns from that Fletcher class destroyer into the Fubuki there. Uh, needing force to hit, three shots. 
and that's not too bad, that's good. And then it's minus two, but needing ones at least to do any damage. Uh, well, okay, nothing then, because they don't do any damage. So lucky, lucky Fubuki there, getting away with that. But not bad shooting on the Mugabe there. Well done to that Fletch class destroyer crew, doing a good job. Okay, so Japanese are firing next, and it's going to be this Mugabe down here. It is electing to fire its front turrets at the um, aircraft carrier right in its range it's in short range so uh, we're needing fours to hit but it is also in the starboard arc of the uh, carrier so it's silhouetted making it freeze to hit freeze to hit then uh, not great but okay um, and they do one DD damage so uh, it's needed three plus on this no AP and it gets all of them so that's three points of damage inflicted upon the Essex class carrier and we've also got some light guns they're going to be shooting into the Fletch class destroyer heading straight towards it there uh, it is needing fours to hit however it's shooting at the destroyer so that makes it five and the destroyer has moved makes it six however because they're light guns they ignore that fast movement of the um, ship so therefore it just needs fives to hit so six shots hit on fives only one hits this is minus two because it's uh, minus two AP and doesn't do critical hits on a six but needing one minus two oh, blimey that minus two didn't have to take it out of them when they do shoot and actually hit but there we go need high rolls rate but there we are so that's the Mugabe shot going on to the Americans who will be electing one of their crafts left which would either be one up there or we'll probably go for the Portland class cruiser down here Yep, the Portland class cruiser then, it's going to be opening its main guns on the Mugabe here, hoping to knock it down some hull points. Um, it's got all its turrets to bear, so we've got nine shots coming in. Needing fours to hit, it's only short range. And that's a lot better, that's very, very good actually. And it just needs three or more to do damage. And we get... Wow, quite a lot of damage actually on it. There's no, there's one six, so we've got a potential critical, but we've got four, five, six points of damage, and a potential critical on a four or more. Uh, it does, so let's roll on here, and we get a five, which would be weapon system hit on this Mugabe there. So it's taken six points of damage plus a weapon system hit, and that does an additional point of damage, so seven in total. We've also got some light guns here, they'll be able to fire and they're going to be firing at this destroyer just down here. Um, and so we've got three shots on this because they are restricted, normally it would be six but three shots on this. And then we're needing fours to hit but it's shooting at the destroyer so that's fives. Destroyers move more than seven, that's um, sixes however um, light guns ignore that because they've got good tracking so it's back down to fives. So fives to hit on three shots. Uh, one hits. And it does need a one plus two damage. It does some damage. So there we go. That's one whole point of damage on that Fubuki class destroyer there. For the Japanese turn and shooting, then this Fubuki class destroyer here is going to be firing its uh, light guns into this uh, Fletch class destroyer there. It's got three shots. Uh, need its point blank range, so it's plus one, so it's free to hit. However, shooting a destroyer, so therefore it's fours. Destroyer moved more than uh, seven inches or six inches, so. We get to ignore that again because of those uh, tracking systems on the guns. So it is at uh, fours. Fours to hit. Two hits. Uh, it's minus two to these, but just needs ones to do damage. Uh, that's enough. Don't forget, uh, light guns don't do any uh, critical damage. So it's two hits upon that Fletcher class destroyer there. For the Americans, then. This uh, Fletch class destroyer is going to be targeting this Fubuki class destroyer there in the same area as before. Uh, it's got three shots and it's needing fours to hit. Uh, that's one hit and it needs one plus to do damage. Minus two, but that's enough, so it does one point of damage onto that destroyer there. And after being fired at, it's firing back and this time we've got uh, three shots again, so needing fours to hit. Uh, that's better. And then three, got minus two to this, which is neither one. Okay, so two, two hits go through. So two whole points taken off that Fletcher class destroyer then from that Fubuki. 
last up to fire for the Americans end in this uh, Fletcher class destroyer just ahead of the uh, aircraft carrier is going to be targeting the Fletcher uh, Fubuki class destroyer down here it's got three shots it's like guns uh, again it is needing force to hit and that's one hit and then needing one to do damage minus two AP to this uh, does nothing so not very good shooting there not at all uh, and then we're going on to the Japanese turn where they've got two Fubuki class destroyers to elect to shoot. So this Fubuki class destroyer down here, not happy, it's just been shot at by this Fletcher class destroyer there. It's going to be firing back and it is needing force to hit with three shots and one hit. And again, it needs one, one or more, but minus two to this. Uh, that's enough. There's no uh, penetrating hits or critical hits on sixes with light guns, but that's one whole point down on that Fletch class destroyer there. Right then, last up for the Japanese to fire then is this Fubuki class destroyer here and it is targeting the aircraft carrier with its light guns, shooting at long range, so it does need uh, fives to hit. Uh, however, it is silhouetted, uh, the uh, aircraft carrier is, so therefore we're back down to four, so fours to hit, and it misses anyway. And now we're going to be going into the dogfighting because everyone's done their shooting and the dogfighting will be coming up next. Okay then, into the dogfighting then. To begin with, we will start down here where we have the Zeros against the Hellcats down here. So again, the Hellcats get plus three, the Zeros get plus two to their roll. So we roll these and we've got uh, a six. That's enough to destroy those Zeros. So that's a good job there from the Americans. And then we've got the uh, Hellcats down here on the uh, Vowels. Now the Vowels have minus one to their um, roll because they're not very good at air combat. They're very good at you know dive bombing, just not in air combat. So uh, pretty sure this could be an American victory here. Uh, yeah, it's enough to do it. Um, they are gone because you add three to that would make it five minus one to that. Not enough. And then we have the last one over here which is uh, Hellcats versus the Zeros. Again, this is gonna be plus two to the Zeros and plus three to the Hellcat. So to the Americans. And yeah, that's enough for the Americans to defeat those Zeros. Of course, tell you what, the American fighters are very, very good in this game. So let, we'll do a little quick uh, tidy up of the table and do a quick roundup of turn four for you. Okay, that is the end of the gunnery phase in turn four, and uh, we'll do a quick recap at the moment to see and get you upset what's going on, because what a turnaround this has been. The uh, Americans have really turned the tables in this game now. It's starting to become a lot more um, more challenging. Um, we've still got the uh, damage control to do, but the USS um, the New Mexico class battleship over here um, basically annihilated the Congo, got some really good rounds off, struck home and uh, the catastrophic explosion happened on the Congo killing everyone on board and sinking the ship and then down here Fletch Castle Destroyer snuck in behind the Mugabe and unleashed a hell of a amount of torpedoes and was able to completely destroy that cruiser down here. Um, the Destroyers over here had a little bit of a slogging match with each other, so they took some damage each. They've reduced now, there's a few down to uh, a couple of hole points left, not many. Down here, the Mugabe took a few hits. Um, it's got a weapon system hit on it, unfortunately, but it didn't do too much damage. It did some damage to the Essex class carrier, but in the air, the Americans have shown their worth. You know, the Hellcats have done their job. Uh, we've still got two bomber flights that have taken off which will be used next turn. So they've got bombs laden on them, they can do some damage to some of these craft coming in there. Uh, it's still looking very, very close, but my God, that was a big turnaround over here in the middle. Um, still threatening with this Mugabe because it's got some torpedoes that can technically take out that aircraft carrier, but it's looking a little bit more balanced in a certain way. We still got four Fubuki destroyers, three destroyers for the Americans. Uh, we still got a battleship on the board, even though it's limping through, and we've got an aircraft carrier that has used all its aircraft. Um, and even with the Japanese having that advantage of the aircraft, you can see how easy it is for them to be destroyed. Um, you need to flood the board with them, I, I'd imagine. But they're very cheap in points, but uh, the Hellcats were absolutely amazing when they get into the fight. That plus three really does the dogfighting good for them. So, 
let's go into what we'll do the um off camera we'll do the uh, roles for the uh damage control and then we'll go into uh the initiative roll to get that over and done with in fact we'll do the initiative roll now so we can get to see who's going to go first in the next turn and then we'll do the uh, damage control off camera okay so the japanese will be firing first but the americans will be moving first okay so the initiative goes over to the japanese again but um, we'll do the damage control and see what we get going into turn five Okay, turn five done. Um, well, the movement that is. Unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, the camera failed to record any of that movement that I've done, which is really annoying, but we'll do a quick little recap of what's going on. So the two Fubuki class destroyers uh, over here have decided to swing round. Uh, the two Fletch class destroyers again, continuing on their route and they're swinging back in towards the middle of the table. Uh, the Hellcats, two Hellcats come over here down the bottom edge they've decided to get away from any of anti-aircraft gun or light guns that could potentially shoot at them some of them might be able to one of them moved over to here they could go further but they didn't need to uh, the two bombers the Corsairs of bombers have decided to come here against the uh, Mugabe which has come alongside the um, Essex class carrier a uh, Fubuki class destroyer has made its way in between the Portland class cruiser and the carrier itself so pretty dangerous for it here because you've got some torpedoes on on this Fubuki here and the New Mexico class destroyer has turned into a, a position where it could let off its main guns and hopefully quite possibly will be targeting this destroyer because we need to get rid of that because if the torpedoes hit that Essex class carrier it's going to be absolutely devastating for the Americans but so far that's the turn uh, that's the movement done and the japanese do have the initiative so they will be firing first but um it's going to be very very close in this one so we've got two bombers down here that could potentially do damage to this mugabe down here depending on if they get a good roll but we have got a fubuki class destroyer being chased by a fletcher uh in the middle just gonna try to uh stop um that new mexico from getting any closer and it wants to get closer a bit more get its torpedoes off but unfortunately not quite close enough so let's go into japanese turn for firing and then we'll carry on with the rest of the turn going into the gunnery phase we have got some aa batteries to be fired off here at these uh, bombers so we'll do that first so to begin with then mugabe is going to be firing his aa battery up at this bottom uh, flight here it's got one local one AA so uh, needing the six uh, oh it does wow that's uh, very good <laughs> that's that bomber's gone and then it's got its light guns that will be shooting at the other one so two shots on this needing sixes and wow that's done it um, wow just saved its skin there uh, its crew really good at anti-aircraft fire this lot uh, so there we go, that's the anti-aircraft gun firing done. Now you're probably questioning, where are the Japanese aircraft that were supposed to be coming on? Uh, obviously they've been absolutely smashed to bits. Um, they're not coming on anymore, purely because we're in the last turn. Uh, it definitely is. So uh, yeah, the aircraft are not coming on anymore. Uh, they've seen the Congo go up. Uh, alarm bells are ringing in a Japanese fleet so that is why the aircraft are not coming in on this turn and it would have been absolutely chaos down this bottom bit if they did so that's one of the reasons why so let's go into Japanese turn for shooting first and we'll probably go straight down to well we're going to probably go to this uh, Fubuki here with some torpedoes right then so we have got six torpedoes going into the aircraft carrier uh, it's literally a point blank range so we're needing threes to hit and it's minus two so fives to hit on this so six torpedoes fives to hit um we've only got two but those two are enough to do three damage or three dd damage so uh f all of these rolls accumulate to how much damage is done so fives and sixes is devastating are um, criticals okay so we'll calculate that up and find out how much it is so it was 25 whole points of damage and then we've got four potential criticals so uh, let's roll this first one that is a critical 
second one is a critical third one's not fourth one is so we've got three critical or potential critical hits so rolling them three then we have got a six which is weapon system we have got a nine which is crew hit and we have also got a five which is another weapon system hit so yeah quite a lot of damage then dealt upon the uh, Essex it survived it's down to 49 hole points at the moment but we have additional uh, hole points to uh, take off with those hits there but we will do that as we go along so uh, next up to fire will be the Americans returning firing actually it's got some light cannons or light guns to be um, to shoot so we'll carry on with those so three light guns then are going into the Essex it's point blank range so we're needing freeze to hit uh, that's two hits and then three plus to do damage that's two points of damage so an additional two points of damage on the Essex there from this Fabuki class destroyer here so the Americans with the New Mexico class battleship are going to be firing they're going to be firing on the Mugabe down here uh, first of all because they've got that magazine ablaze you would think it would come off but it's not it's in the entire game that continues on uh, we need to roll for the front two turrets and the turret at the back because the rear one is been blown up it's no longer in the game uh, so we've got three turrets to roll on to see whether they fire on a one two or three they don't so the first one doesn't second turret does and then the third turret doesn't so we've only got one turret firing okay so the front turret well it's the second turret there in the middle is going to be firing upon the Mugabe it is needing a uh, freeze to hit uh, no it doesn't need force to hit force to hit and it misses all of them oh god that's terrible absolutely terrible they should have been able to do that but um, that's a wasted wasted shooting going on there but the um, Mexico will be firing its um, light guns at this destroyer here and it's got six shots uh, but because it's restricted you only get three on each side so three shots uh, that is at short range no long range so it's shooting at a destroyer destroyer moved so it's going to be fives fives to hit one hit and there's one point of damage so it does one damage so there we go one damage upon the Fubuki class destroyer there shooting for the Japanese the Mugabe cruiser down here right alongside the Essex is going to be unleashing six torpedoes into the Essex it's needing fours to hit um, it would be uh, sevens or it would be sixes but we got the uh, silhouetted and point blank range even with that minus two for firing torpedo weapon systems uh, it comes up to fours so uh, it's needing fours to hit um, which is very good and that's a good roll now each of these do uh, three damage each so we'll get more dice 12 damage dice then coming in on the Essex devastating weapon fives and sixes will be criticals and on top of that whatever these dice roll is the damage dealt could see the end of the Essex in this I've got to calculate and tally this up and get back to you okay fortunately for the Essex uh, it has torpedo belts meaning it reduces them by three so the damage dice dealt out by the um, torpedoes is all reduced by three so therefore we only have 19 whole points there has been dealt on the Essex itself so it saved itself with those uh, torpedo belts they do come in handy and uh, worked out rather well for them because if they hadn't had those torpedo belts that would be it it would have been sunk and gone so 19 whole points of damage dealt out there was no critical hits because we reduced that damage dice so the Mugabe still got some firing to do, it's got its light guns that will be shooting into the uh, Essex and uh, it needs fours to hit and point blank range so it needs threes to hit so three shots, threes to hit and that's two hits and then it's needing threes to do damage that's two points of damage additionally onto the Essex class carrier up next then is this Fletcher class destroyer from the Americans shooting it's going to be firing its 
five or well, ten torpedoes into the Mugabe here. It is needing sixes to hit. So sixes will do it. So we've got two hits, so they accumulate three points of damage each. Let's get them ready for you. Six and then this does the amount of damage, fives and sixes are um, criticals. Needs some fives and sixes. So we've got five and six there. It could be enough. That together should be enough to completely sink the Mugabe, but we will calculate that up now and get back to you with the result. And with that hit from those torpedoes, it was enough to reduce the Mugabe cruiser down here to zero hull points, sinking it and 453 people perished on board of that attack from this Fletcher class destroyer there. And it has sent up the flags of all the other ships in the Japanese fleet here. They have decided to bug out because we still have a battleship in the game. Even though if we'd carried on with a few more shooting, perhaps this Fubuki down here could have done some damage, but at the end of the day, it was not looking in their favor. The Americans have turned it against um, the Japanese here. The odds were against the Americans, but they've able to pull it back yet again. They have dealt a victory against the Japanese, and it's been quite an interesting battle, quite um, technical. Lots of aircraft involved, lots of things going on. Uh, the bigger the game, the harder it is to control. Must admit, I got a few rules wrong. Well, quite fair bit wrong could have done other things and could have done some better things etc but that's the way the game goes and that's the difficulty of playing solo so i do hope you enjoyed it guys doing my best to keep it going as you know as well as i can possibly can um once you start adding more stuff like i said playing solo playing by myself it's a lot of bookkeeping and a lot of managing with these ships because there's a lot of rules to get involved with this stuff but it was a good game. I enjoyed it. There was some really good um, turnaround in the middle there when the Americans decided to um, blow up the Congo. That really did help them. And uh, getting the aircraft carriers in was good fun. We're going to get the aircraft carriers in again, get some more aircraft in, and uh, get some more bombing runs in, etc. But um, when you start adding those aircraft, like I said, a lot gets involved. So it does become very, very difficult. But I do hope you enjoyed it. That is the um, episode four of our campaign. So it's been an American victory. That somehow they turned it around. They massively turned it around. So the Japanese high command is going to be very, very unpleased with this. And looks like I'm going to need some more, um, more fleets uh, or Japanese ships to join the fleet to actually do some damage against the Americans. Um, a lot of decision making I made was quite random as in how I do it, that's how I want to do it, but um, I do hope you enjoyed it, it's just part of me playing fun, having good time, letting the campaign roll, letting the narrative side of it roll, and just basically going for it, okay, so it's non-competitive style guys, um, just want you guys to see what the game's like, and have fun, and enjoy the games that I'm playing in this uh, Victory at Sea campaign that I'm doing, so um, episode 4 done, American Victory, been absolutely immense the Congo going up that you know that was crazy uh, first of all the bombers the um, vows did their job on the um, Portland class cruiser absolutely annihilated it but the the star of the show has to be the New Mexico class battleship down here taking an absolute pounding but managed to take out that um, battle cruiser the Congo so it's done it uh, they've done their job so for this the Japanese have seen what's going on, the Mugabe's gone up, that's it, the Japanese are just down to destroyers, there's a battleship still on the board, so therefore they are bogging out, they're getting out of there, because um, it's not looked good for them. So they need to step up their game, whereas the Americans, they've you know, scraped through, turned it around, done the job, and uh, claimed a victory here. So, another victory for the Americans, this time in the Central, uh, Central Pacific Fleet, and uh, I'm pretty sure the Japanese are going to be bringing out some bigger guns. Maybe the Yamato might make a return. We don't know. But the Americans still have other battleships in their fleet that are going to be uh, trying to protect what they have. So, 
Thanks very much for watching. Any comments, let me know in the comment section. Um, like I said, any rules I got wrong, just please let me know because it helps me better my better, better the game and better my uh, learning. And uh, I enjoy it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Eel Wargamer here, and uh, happy wargaming, guys. See you again soon.